Well, it's been nothing but bad news and negativity to come from the Mercedes camp since the opening race of the season in Bahrain. With George Russell having already accepted that Red Bull have the title fight all but wrapped up, and Turtle Wolf stating that there was nothing positive at all to take from the race. So all in all, a very defeated Mercedes team. But now that they've accepted the fact that the concept of the W14 hasn't worked, where do they go from here? And what is Wolf's secret weapon? This is one you don't want to miss guys, so let's dive straight into today's video. Things could not have gotten off to a worse start for Mercedes, with them finding themselves further down the pecking order than they initially thought, tumbling all the way down to 4th best constructor if the results at Bahrain are anything to go by, with Wolf stating that this had been one of his worst days ever in racing. One of the worst days in racing, really not good at all. We were just lacking pace front, right and centre. Red Bull is just on a different planet. What I'm saying here is how I feel right now. I'm not overreacting, the gap is very big, and in order to catch up we need to make big steps, not conventional ones. When you look at where we were at the end of last season, where it looked like we caught up a lot, but we have almost doubled, if not tripled, the gap to Red Bull now. For us, everything is bad, and in the race you saw the consequences, and we were going backwards. So if what Wolf says is true, and the gap to Red Bull has tripled, the Mercedes need to somehow extract a second and a half a lap time from the W14, which with a very restrictive budget cap will be almost impossible for Mercedes to achieve. Which begs the question, where has it all gone wrong for Mercedes with the W14, and where do they go from here? Troubles found in Formula 1 cars are usually narrowed down to drag and downforce. If you have too much drag, then you simply cannot get up to speed quick enough out of the corners and down the straights, whereas poor downforce severely impedes a Formula 1 car's cornering speed and tyre wear. You want as little drag with as much downforce as possible, something that Red Bull has absolutely nailed with the new era of Formula 1 cars. In Bahrain during qualifying, Hamilton was the fourth fastest driver through the speed traps, so we can assume the W14 has very little drag, something that was confirmed by Wolf. However, they do struggle with a lack of downforce which saw them suffer with high tyre degradation through the race and a severe lack of pace through the medium to high speed corners as well. But now the first race is history, and Mercedes know where they are in the pecking order. They have finally admitted that the concept did not work, and they need to switch their focus for the W14 with immediate effect. But how do Mercedes plan on salvaging any hope they had left for 2023? Well, the answer is James Allison. Allison is no stranger to Mercedes, having been the technical director there from 2017 to 2021, where we saw him hand the role over to the current technical director, Mike Elliott. Allison is no stranger to Formula 1, and has put his mark on some of the most impressive Formula 1 cars this side of millennium. Having been head of the aerodynamics at Ferrari in the early 2000s, working closely with Michael Schumacher, and also working closely with Alonso in his first championship with Renault. So Allison is the secret weapon that Mercedes have turned to to help them get the 2023 season back on track. But what do they need to do from here? The W14 represents two and a half to three years of work, which Mercedes have essentially said needs throwing in the bin, and that is a bitter pill to swallow, and leaves the team with a mountain to climb with their massive fall from grace. Wolf has already stated that radical changes are needed to change the W14, and believes they could learn a few things from Aston Martin. After all, it utilises a Mercedes engine, suspension and gearbox, and also utilises Mercedes wind tunnel. I think it's radical, as I said they deserve to be where they are, because they did a fantastic job. The good news is a lot of Mercedes is in there, so we know exactly where to pinpoint it. So Wolf thinks Mercedes can learn a lot from Aston Martin and the AMR 23, but will they go as far as to somewhat copy their aero design? Something Mercedes have said in the past that they would never do, but do desperate times call for desperate measures? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But that's going to be the video from me today guys, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content. And until the next time, bye bye.